to Talk Art. I'm Sally Rain, and I will be your host as we delve into the world of the artist and the art that's all around us. Talk Art is sponsored by the Silicon Valley Open Studios. During the first three weekends in May, hundreds of local artists open their studios to the public. For more information, you can go to the website svos.org. Our guest, Rachel Tirash, is a mixed media artist, and she works in two main areas of art, the world of polymer clay and abstract painting. She is a local artist who moved to the Bay Area 20 years ago from Israel. So welcome, Rachel. Thank you, Sally. I'm really excited to be here. Yes, your art is absolutely beautiful, and the details that you have in your clay work is just amazing to me. I'm very curious to find out how you actually create it. So how did you get involved in creating art like this? Well, my, it all started when I left the roller coaster of the high-tech industry. And uh, then I wanted to find something to other, other things to do. And I started to take some classes in art in different areas. And um, I find, found out myself in a workshop of polymer clay. And since then, I didn't stop doing it. So uh, using the clay and the polymer clay is your passion for creating these days? Yes, and the paintings, with the abstract paintings, it's just complementary for it's another side of my art. Right, so very fine detail and then large swaths of color sort of balance you out a little bit, I think. Yes, <coughs> I can say that in, with the polymer clay, I really may, uh, they go crazy with the colors. Right. With my paintings, I go crazy with the texture. Right. Well, they're beautiful work. So you're a self-taught artist then. You've been to classes, but what does it mean to you to be a self-taught artist? Well, for my profession, I went to college. I studied four years of, uh, hard four years of electrical engineering. Oh, yeah. And uh, with art, I find it more free. And I, want the, I need the freedom. I right. need the freedom to choose myself, to choose my schedule, to choose my curriculum, not something else, someone else that will dictate that. Right. So I find myself taking classes wherever I think I want to, to learn something new. Excellent. With the, with the art, I also I took some classes at De Anza College to learn something about color and design. Mm -hmm. I even took Photoshop and photography and web design so I can support myself in my business, so I will be self-sufficient. Excellent. So you took some classes to learn materials and a little bit of design work and business. Well, yes. Excellent. Yes. That's a good combination. Yes. <laughs> well, I cannot uh, uh, turn my back to my engineering uh, side of my brain. No, of course not. <laughs> excellent. So the materials are very interesting. What exactly is polymer clay? Well, polymer clay, as you see here, these are the, this is the raw material. It comes with these small packages, um, uh, and it's, uh, po it's polymer. It's a plastic material. It's very soft, and um, it's easy to work with. So it's malleable like clay, but it's plastic. Yes. And then how does it set? How do you make it Then set? you need to put it in the oven for only 275 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 minutes. So it's very oh. low tech. Oh, it's, so it's quick and it's not like a, a clay bowl that needs to be fired in high heat with glaze. No, no, no. it's just, oh, mm -hmm. very interesting. Yes. So you could use a kitchen oven or something like that, right? Yeah, that's what I'm using, yes. Oh, <laughs> excellent. So um, you have some images of some of your polymer clay art. Why don't we take a look at those now and you can describe some of the processes that you use to make them. Yeah, sure. So this is a one of this is a series of steps that I made this uh, lizard. This is the raw lizard. I found this in a, in a store. Uh, it just wires. Then the, the next slide you see that I already covered it with a, a thin set and clay. Um, 
polymer clay, just a mud polymer clay. Uh, so it will have one layer. Uh, on that particular one, I put also silver leaf because I used, when you see the other, other slide, I used translucent polymer clay. I wanted the silver layer to shine through that. So the next slide, you see the uh, end result. So does the light shine up through that? Then? It's not the light. It's just, oh, the, just you reflects. see you see the uh, silver. That's beautiful, and all of the different patterns that you used. Yeah. So you can see you later. You will see. I'm. I like to use thread uh, <coughs> that I uh, throw at any any um, device, any item that I do. I, with the thread, I, um, I partition the, the, the object that I have into different areas. So each area I can uh, do different. Uh, so there's the thread that you use. Yes, this is an, uh, a, a vase or a bottle. Um, this is the thread. <coughs> it looks like sort of a hemp string. Yeah. OK. Depends what Good. I find in the store. Right. Yeah, and this is the end, the end result. So it looks like you use objects that you find that you then create your art around. Yeah, I like to go to a thrift store or garage sales, and I like to find. I, I, it depends on the item. I never know what I will find. It depends how it talks to me. Well, what type of patterns are those in the clay? These are uh, canes that I make. I will see later. And this is an example of a teapot that I covered. I really like teapots. I like their shapes. It's very organic. It's very musical. And so here also, I divided it into half with a, a with the string there. The string. Yeah, I see that. And so I usually do one half very very colorful with this uh, uh, kaleidoscope cane, and the other half a little bit uh, less design intense. But you choose your colors so that it is a Yes, the colors, yes. I, I, I make a lot of canes. The canes are like my colors, and uh, the item is like my canvas. And this is another example of candle holders. The same technique, just different objects. So most of the items they are usable. And this is a series I made of um, uh, letter openers. Um, the letter openers, they are recycled um, item that I found that I thought it can be a letter opener. So I don't know what it was before. So you started with the piece of metal. Yes. And then you put the clay on I it. I made a handle like. So. Yes. So it sounds like you reuse objects frequently. And yes. So this is, is one of your letter openers that you created. And I see they're just very small, tiny pieces that are repeated <laughs> over and over again in patterns that are, it's just amazing detail that you have here. How do you make these? What do you do? So this is an example of um, the, most, the same technique of a cane. It's just layering of, a, oh, I see. of scrap clay. So we don't, we never, we never ever throw away uh, used clay oh, or good. any scraps. We always make something from it. So okay. this is just layering between uh, white sheets of uh, clay. Wow. Well, show us how you make the sheets and the canes. And why don't you show us your technique? How does this work? OK, so today I, I will make uh, three different uh, uh, canes. Um, so I, I have here, I already made them. Uh, these two, I will make a um, uh, bullseye. So I have this black and the sheets of uh, clay, and just 
um, roll it around. And as you can see, it's so it just fits right on there. Yeah, it just uh, and you can roll it, and then I have this blade. It's a special blade because uh, it's really thin. Okay. And if I cut it here, and this is the oh, I see. So so that's how you make the repeating patterns. Yes. Some so of the them pattern, are a lot more detailed than that, but that's a simple one, right? Yeah, the pattern is the same the whole length of the, of the cane. <clears throat> so this is one cane. And how thin can you cut those? How thin do you usually cut them well, for a piece? Well, yeah, it's, it's, you, I can cut it thin and it's... So is it like a quarter inch or like I a don't millimeter? Measure. Approximately. There you go. Okay. What do you? What else do you have? <coughs> Here I have. Uh, I'm already made two sheets of uh, polymer clay in two in uh, contrasting colors, and I uh, stack them together, and uh, I will make a um, uh, swirl cane. Okay. Uh, it's like a jelly roll. Uh, so it's a little bit hard, but it just doesn't matter. So you can see it's it's uh, it's you can manipulate it. Um, it's I see. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, it's ten, it's stood up a little stood too much, but it's fine. So that would make a, a spiral. Yes. As part yes. of your pattern. Yeah. Ah. What I like it, you see, from here you don't see much. Right. But then you cut it, and then there is a surprise. Wow, that is beautiful. So that's why I like. Uh, so that's the spiral, and now, um, the the secret, the big secret of making those really nice uh, sheets. Yeah, your sheets is are the, beautiful. Is the pasta machine. Oh, you use a pasta machine. Look yeah. at that. Yeah, that, that's a, because to make it by hand, it's really hard. Right, to make it exactly even and yeah. flat, but the pasta machine yeah. will do that for you. Yeah, Very so nice. this, with the pasta machine, we can create these nice sheets. And uh, this is, I wanted to show you um, the a technique that really changed uh, the life of the people that make polymer clay is to make a granular change of color. It's called Skinner blade. Skinner is the last name of the woman that invented that. Okay, so, so show you, us what that is. Yeah, so we start with two triangles. Mm -hmm. uh, usually it's a color in the white or yellow, something mm -hmm. that's dramatic. Right, okay. <coughs> so uh, it's always and then the pasta machine has settings. Right, so, so how wide it is yes. apart. Okay. Yeah. So we start. And oh, we do it several so times. We're folding it over. We're folding it always the same direction. It. Oh, interesting. And as long as you do it, you, de you get more change of color, but you can stop to do it anytime okay, so you want. I can't wait to see this. I have an, in my mind, I think I know what's yeah. happening, but I want to see yeah, it. So, so you're going to make a cane as well from this? Yeah, so from okay. this you can do many things, but I will just uh, stop here and, um, and what we do is just I you can see here some of the... Uh -huh. So it's, it's layered and swirled and now yes. you're going to roll it up. So I'm going to roll it out here from the white to the red. Wow, and when I cut it, you can see the difference. Oh, so it starts white and then it goes to yes. pink and then it goes to red. Very yes. Very nice. Yeah. So here are, these are three really simple. Right. 
the the power of that is to combine them together. Okay. And uh, to create something really that looks complicated. So I have here an example, this one, that uh, here I combined like something like this. I see. Yeah. So you have several different canes that you put together. Yeah. And. Um, and then you would take this and put so it. Then I reduce it into oh. this small triangle. Oh, so there's two. Like this. This one became this one. Oh, so you pressed it together and oh, very nice. I can yeah. see that. And, the, and the, the magic is to continue making, uh, cutting it, put it together, and then press it again to, to a triangle and cut it together. So this is after twice, two, two times that I cut in uh, the triangle. So that is your cane. This is half of the cane. And from that, I will make a kaleidoscope cane. And I will cut it in the middle. And I will put it <gasps> Look at together. That. Oh my goodness. And this is the magic. So that's how you make it repeat itself yes. so wonderfully. So that's why we, the, it's like a kaleidoscope. So and you can repeatable. just leave this clay sitting because this has been sitting yeah. for a while. Oh yeah, you can. It doesn't harden until no. you cook it? Yes. Oh, well that's nice. That's a lot easier than clay. Yeah. <laughs> so you just manipulate it together. This, this will be, um, it wow. won't be a, so. And it's a kaleidoscope, so yes. you have so some have examples here, of that as well. Yeah, here. more kaleidoscope canes that I made, um, different colors, dif different combinations. But they all started with canes. But they all started with the small, very simple canes that I put together. Wow. And the thing is that you never know what you, you will get. And you cut it and say, oh my god. <laughs> it's a surprise. A surprise. Uh, and then yes. you, then you, so you prepare your canes ahead of time. Yes. Enough to com cover the object that you would like to do. Yes. Yeah. Hopefully it's enough. Yeah. <laughs> and then, this is a really nice acrylic rod, and you can um, make it straight. So that helps to compress it a little bit and flatten it. To compress, to flatten it, to straighten it. Yes. Yeah. Wow. So very nice. Good. Very simple tools. Simple tools. High, low, low tech. Nothing. Nothing special. Well, and except for the design sense and yes. some patience. I, I must say that's a lot of work put into every little piece of that. Yeah. And here I brought another example of a flower cane. And also. It's all very simple. It's just combining uh, simple canes together. So then, as a transition from your polymer clay work, you ha you do your paintings are somewhat of a collage. They're material mm -hmm. collages, and you also have these wonderful collages with polymer clay and other instruments. And what is this exactly? Well, this is a um, um, bag hanger. You go to the restaurant and you want to put your uh, bag not on the floor. Oh, so you it's a, like you hang your purse here. Yes. Oh, on this it's on the table. Oh, yeah. very nice. And then you've designed it. Yes. Yeah. It it's just a very very fun to do. Very um, nice. So from this you also do beautiful abstract paintings. So why don't we take a look at some of the images that you brought in of some of your paintings and mm -hmm. find out the techniques you use for those. Okay, so these are the, some examples of some of your bag hangers that you use the collage technique. Yeah, that's uh, another series I made. It's also collage, yes. Very colorful. Thank you. So this is a... Uh, uh, this painting is uh, uh, one uh, of, uh, in a series of four. Um, it, uh, I, it, I saw a picture of a uh, hill here in, at Stanford, um, and uh, I wanted to create uh, the same hill but in different uh, seasons. So this is summer. Uh, the texture is uh, here, I think it's uh, uh, paper some kind of paper I found. Here is uh, 
I love that red and dark color. What is that made out of? It's a, it's a pigment, the, the white is pigment, and uh, it's the same, I think it's a, a paper and uh, some fabric. And how do you get it to stay on the painting? What do you use? I just use the regular uh, glue. Low tech. Everything Very is nice. low tech. This is the green. Uh, so this is the this same is the hill. Spring. spring. Oh, very nice. And there is, I think, another one. This is the winter. I love the colors, how you use the purples. Um, what types of paints do you use for these? Acry uh, acrylic and uh, white, I use pigment. So the pigment, uh, uh, when it's dry, it's more translucent. It has a translucent... Um, uh, and underneath you the... have your found materials. Yeah. I think here is burlap also. Burlap? Yes, I like to use a lot of burlap. Yeah, it's got a very nice rough texture. This is a, a, a triplet, trip, uh, triptych. Tri triptych. Uh, here I use uh, only a fabric on uh, wood, and I call it a, a transformation. The transformation is also transforming the fabric into painting, and also the egg shape is also a tran it will transform. And then you, it seems like you use tools to create other textures as well, sort of. Yeah, it, it's all fabric. Yeah. Oh, really? Hmm. Yeah, here this painting is lots of uh, uh, texture. And here uh, I, I did it after I came back from Yellowstone. And the colors there were amazing. And this was inspired me to do that. But uh, you don't see, you don't smell the smell. <laughs> right. Yeah, here it's a 12 by 12. I call it dreams. And uh, after I sold that, I got inspired, and I big, did a really big painting, 30 by 40. I call it Big Dream. Dream big. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Uh, here, I, uh, this is on wood, and um, I decided to do it upside down. Uh, I, I turned the, the wood uh, to the other side. So I thought I will create, a, a, it will have um, a frame. But I struggled for so much so much time because the frame just s stopped me from doing things. And uh, then I had this idea to include the frame inside the picture. So I have the, it is a frame, but it is part of the picture. Looks very nice. Uh, this is a, uh, 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 this is a uh, color series. Uh, it was inspired by a box of colors that I got for $5 and I just wanted to throw as much color as possible. Beautiful. And the same thing, I took that and I got inspired to do the chair. Uh, this was 3D uh, and it was, it's really hard to do 3D. You have to be very patient. But uh, this the same colors, uh, different. Uh, and why a chair? Well, I did it uh, as a, a donation for uh, the Women's Club in Palo Alto. They uh, gave chairs to artists to paint, and then we donated them, and they, they auctioned it. That's it's beautiful work. I love Thank the you. ways you use texture and color. It's not nearly as detailed. Mm -hmm. So you are, go from one end of the spectrum, from tiny little kaleidoscope mm -hmm. to big swaths of color. Yeah. I think that's a really interesting way to experience the art. So tell us where we can see your art. Well, I have my polymer clay uh, art in the Los Altos in Gallery 9. Gallery 9. And what type of gallery is that? It's a co-op. We have uh, 30 artists that show their art there. So it's a cooperative gallery yes. in Los Altos. Excellent. And are you also part of the Silicon Valley Open Studios? Yes, Silicon Valley Open Studios is how I started, and I've been showing the, there for eight years. Uh, it's a great organization. So what do you think some of the benefits are for showing with SVOS? 
Yeah, I got uh, many collaborations via the Silicon Valley Open Studio. I got this interview, <laughs> so uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's very supportive, and uh, that's the community. That's beautiful. Now this, when you you use these little kaleidoscope pieces and you put them on a big structure. Tell us some of the challenges of that. Just real short story. Well, as you know, I, c I need to put it in the oven to cure, so I need to put the whole thing in the oven. I made the ones, uh, um, I usually I test before right. that I can put it in the oven. I have a big oven, but not so big. I had a rooster that I made, and uh, I couldn't put it all uh, one one uh, piece inside the oven. Oh no! So I had yes. So <laughs> I had to put a, a half of it, and then the legs were outside. I had to build some uh, structure so the oven will still operate while it's open and uh, <laughs> cover the uh, the door with the tin foil so the heat will stay. It was uh, it was very funny. <laughs> it's a challenge. That's yes. excellent. So, when you look at your little tiny kaleidoscope pieces, how do you put them on, like the rooster? How do you visualize it? How do you put them on? Well, I, I make a lot of uh, the canes, and then I have the, the object, and I, I put the strings, and I see the But do you put space. it on with your fingers? Ah, yeah, I put them in the fingers, uh, I, with the road. Uh, I make it uh, smooth, uh, and after I, I um, so it won't have any differences in the height. And if there is, it, uh, there is, it's, uh, it's handmade. Yes. Uh, after I bake it in the oven, I also sand it, so it will be smooth. So uh, all this uh, uh, letter opener, it's smooth to the to the touch. Well, they're beautiful, and thank you so much for being on Talk Art. It was very interesting to find out how you do this. Thank you.